All right, so let's talk about energy bar charts. Energy bar charts are um, a tool like free body diagrams, like motion diagrams, that we're going to use to analyze what's taking place and to help us understand, in this case, the changes of energy uh, in our system. So for my first example problem, I'm going to uh, do a third base uh, or a baseball player on third base. He's starting on third base, then he's going to be running towards home base, and finally he's going to slide in and like stop on home plate. And he's gonna he's gonna score and it's gonna win the World Series or something. Um, so starting at rest, running at two, and then coming to rest again at three. Let's just look through on a conceptual level what kinds of energy he has. All right, at the beginning, the only kind of energy that he's going to have is he's going to have chemical potential energy. I'm going to give him a lot of it so we have some to, some to burn as we go. Um, he has this chemical potential energy. I'm not giving him any kinetic because he's not moving yet. I'm not going to give him gravitational potential because even though he does have gravitational potential, you know, he, he is like off the ground. He's not laying on his face. Um, he's going to be pretty much at the same gravitational potential energy the entire time. I guess you could make the argument that he loses a little bit when he slides in at the very end, but we're gonna, for simplicity's sake, we're just gonna ignore the small change in gravitational potential energy. Let's focus on what really changes at moment two, where suddenly at moment two, he now has some kinetic energy that he didn't have before because he's been running. But we have to think about, well, where did that energy come from? Where does your energy come from when you run? Uh, you guys know this, it comes from your food. It comes from the energy in your body. So that means if he gained that kinetic energy, he just lost some of his stores of chemical potential energy. I'm obviously, uh, his chemical potential energy should probably be way bigger than this because uh, running, uh, running towards the home plate shouldn't use up a third of his uh, energy stores in his body. Otherwise, exercise to lose weight would be super easy. Um, but, um, but this gives the idea. Then he slides into home. When he slides into home, his kinetic energy is going to drop to zero. He's also lost a little bit more chemical potential energy between now and then. So I'm gonna drop him down a little bit more on chemical potential energy. That's right, he's almost wasted away to a, to a skeleton. Um, but as he slid into home, he was rubbing against the ground and he was generating heat. And as he did that, he created our final energy, our thermal energy. So, so the stuff that you guys should recognize is that in all of these, I always had three total blocks of energy. In your energy bar charts, that should be something you shoot for, is to always make sure that your amount of energy or your work done always stays exactly the same. Uh, so make sure that the, the numbers check out and we'll be turning these into equations later on. All right, let's go to uh, problem two. Uh, we have this, uh, this uh, pulley system, similar to what we did a lot of in our forces unit, and we're gonna have this mass fall while the other mass raises. Uh, we're gonna be trying to, uh, our first moment is when it looks like this, and our second moment will be just before the 10 kilogram mass hits the ground. So those are our two moments, uh, one and two. And at moment one, we have a, a significant amount of potential energy. And we're actually gonna calculate it this time. Uh, the potential energy that we have there is going to be MGY, where it's, uh, we'll call zero, our y equals zero point, the ground. Um, and that means that it would be 10 times 10 times two, or what I'm going to call for convenience sake, 200 joules right there. So that is our uh, gravitational potential energy. Um, this guy has no gravitational potential energy because he's on the ground. And we also have no kinetic energy because nobody's moved yet. So let's move, uh, uh, go till later. Let's talk about what happens a little bit later on. Uh, later on, when they switch, now we have gravitational potential energy again, but instead of it being the gravitational potential energy of the 10 kilogram mass, now it's the gravitational potential energy of the five kilogram mass. So similar calculation, except now it's five times 10 times two, uh, which comes out to being only 100 joules. And if we just turned, uh, if we still have 100 joules as gravitational potential, then we already know how much is being turned into kinetic potential or kinetic energy. It has to be the 100, other 100 joules. We'll do the work to figure out exactly how to figure out how much energy uh, ends up in each object. Um, I'll give it to you guys if you guys want to try and figure it out on your own. It works out 
that 66.6 joules is the kinetic energy of the 10 kilogram mass and 33.3 uh, joules is the kinetic energy of the five kilogram mass. But for now, uh, we've, we've, brought, uh, we've figured out the, the types of energy and we made sure that it's the same on each side, so we're good to go. All right, for our very last problem, we have this pendulum that's swinging back and forth. And I should have written this in here ahead of time, but I'll throw it in now. It is a one meter long string. Uh, and we'll say that the mass of, the, of this little guy right here, let's call him one kilogram, just to make our math really easy. So at this moment, all the way at the top, I'm trying to figure out what kind of energy it has just before we release the pendulum. It has to have gravitational potential energy. But I have to decide where I'm gonna put zero at. I could put zero all the way at the ground, wherever that is. But that doesn't really make sense in this problem. It's actually gonna be way easier if I say my zero point is right at the lowest point that the object ever gets. Since it never goes further down than that, I don't really need to worry about energy at a lower point than that. So it's easiest to just say, this is what's gonna be zero potential energy for this problem. So with that said, I can now figure out how much potential energy we're starting with. It's going to be mgy, uh, the mass is a one kilogram mass times 10. It's one meter off the ground because, or off our zero point, because that's how long the string, uh, the string is. So when it gets down there, that's how long it'll be. Uh, and so that gets us to an initial energy of 10. I'm going to use two blocks to represent that because that'll be convenient, I hope. So this is 10 joules of gravitational potential. When we get to this second moment here, here it's now at zero gravitational potential. We've wiped out all our gravitational potential, which means now we have kinetic energy. Um, so this is going to be our kinetic energy at this moment. Um, and it still has to be 10 joules because we haven't, the energy that was gravitational turned into kinetic. And finally, at this point here, I will leave it to you guys to figure out the math, but at that 60 degree angle, we're actually going to be split. It started gaining gravitational potential back again, so it has some gravitational potential, but it's still moving, so it still has some kinetic energy. So I will, I will leave it to you guys to see if you can figure out why at a 60 degree angle that works. Um, but for now, hopefully this helps you guys get an idea of what energy bar charts are supposed to look like.